My mom always functioned using her own logic, and it usually baffled my siblings and I. She did a lot of weird things, but the strangest thing that she used to do is when I was a kid, I was tasked to cut the grass in the yard with a knife. <laughs> my mom was born in Mexico in 1960. She was one of seven children, and her siblings gave her the nickname Borona, which means crumb in Spanish. I think to her family, she was always very shy and small, didn't stand out, didn't have the strong presence of some of her more expressive older brothers or commanding nature of her older sisters. In Mexico, she only made it to the fourth grade and went immediately into working. One of her first jobs was working with guitars in a small factory. She was 11 years old. Her hometown was well known in Mexico for their guitars, but she never learned how to play them. Instead, we were told stories about the assembly process. My mom would mime how she sanded the guitars and used tools to put them together. I would stare at her hands whenever she told us the process of using sandpaper to smooth out the body of the guitar. Her hands were not dainty at all. Sometimes I looked at her hands and was surprised by the small woman they were attached to. They told the story of how she had worked in factories and hard labor her whole life. I couldn't imagine what it would feel like to be touched by those hands as delicately as she touched those guitars. Most of my life, my parents had an open door policy for our family to come and stay with us if they needed. So growing up, I lived in a rotating cast of cousins, aunts, uncles, grandparents who slept in the living room, kitchen, backyard, storage closet, anywhere we could find a place. All of this in a two-bedroom rental that I lived in with my dad and four siblings. Space in our home was limited, but this did not prevent my mom from adding to the clutter. She spent her free time going to thrift stores and garage sales so she could buy stuff to sell later. She kept boxes in the yard, the side of the house, all of our closets, and even her van was full of things she bought to sell on the weekends. Ironically, even though she was a bit of a hoarder, she hated that we had so much stuff. She felt like if we had less things, it would be easier to manage. Using her logic, she decided that the way of dealing with all the clutter was to sell our dishware or hide our socks. Less things meant less to clean or wash and less to make dirty. You can't have a sink full of dishes if there isn't any dishes. <laughs> I'd be frustrated trying to get ready for school in the mornings as I was trying to find socks to wear for the day. One time I went up to my mom and I asked her where all my socks went. She said, you and your brother left your stuff all over the place, so I threw them out. <laughs> I didn't even know what to say in response to this. I was in elementary school. It's not like I could buy replacements or do my own laundry. We didn't have a washer at our house, so my solution was to sneak into her room before school and borrow her socks. <laughs> my mom caught on to this and figured the best course of action was to buy herself more feminine socks in an effort to avoid me taking hers. <laughs> Unfortunately, that was not the deterrent she hoped for. <laughs> I was happy to wear pink socks if it meant that I had something on my feet to wear for the day. The feud with my mom continued as I got older. Uh, I wasn't like my older sisters who helped her when she needed somebody to be a translator or to fill out paperwork or talk to authority figures. These are things that she struggled with. Whenever the idea was presented for her to try to learn to do some of this stuff on her own, she would reject it and say that she was not capable of those things. Things like improving her writing, her reading, or even simple tasks like working the TV remote. My mom would just say that she was not smart. She, was, she only made it to the fourth grade. She didn't speak English. And nothing that we did to try to explain how easy it was could convince her otherwise. She felt limited by what she was able to do because she had been a borona her whole life. In high school, I tried to use MapQuest directions to get us to Baboa Park from North County. During this time period, there was a lot of student protests happening because of some immigration laws that were being passed. This is the kind of thing that I was interested in. I started going out to do interviews with people at the protest. I wanted to check out a local event that I had heard about from a local activist. I convinced my mom to drive me down and I used my printed directions to assure her that I would be able to get us there. And she gave in but was frustrated the whole drive and complained when we took a wrong turn saying, this is why I don't like driving to new places. I felt very discouraged that I couldn't navigate her the way my older sisters were able to. And even though we managed to find the way, I didn't feel comfortable trying to direct her in the future. My mom thought boys would just naturally know how to do boy things at some point. She saw other men who knew how to build things or work on cars or be good at negotiating and smooth talking. I was a shy kid. I was a borona because of her and I got bullied and I didn't like sports or cars and I wasn't loud or tough. 
I like to use my imagination and I like to sing and write. In third grade, we had a project where we drew a picture and wrote a short paragraph to show the progress in our writing for a back to school night. The assignment was pretty straightforward. Most of the other kids drew themselves, their families, or some kind of hobby they enjoyed. I drew a sad alien <laughs> and a paragraph of his life on an empty planet. An early sign that I probably needed some help. <laughs> Parents filled the classroom of my elementary school looking at our little exhibit. I pointed out my picture on the wall and my mom noted that my handwriting was not as nice as some of the other children. Yeah, that definitely made me feel like a sad alien. <laughs> I was failing as a boy. My mom needed somebody to help with the yard work, but we didn't have any equipment for the outside of the house. But we had a yard with grass and weeds and no real knowledge on how to manage it. We didn't own a lawnmower or a weed whacker. Those are tools that would have been deemed too difficult for my mom to learn how to use. So using her logic and resources, she decided that my brother and I would just cut it with a knife. <laughs> and we had special backyard knives. <laughs> we had a block in the kitchen with knives that seemed to have no use for my mom. We didn't eat steak, so the steak knife seemed like the perfect tool for cutting grass. My little brother and I would regularly spend time in the yard with a knife, taking handfuls of grass and weeds, sawing through it, and then stuffing it into plastic bags. And when those bags were full, we tossed them into the gray trash cans instead of the green ones. Why? Because the green ones were being used for extra storage. <laughs> or big things that we couldn't throw away all at once. If we had something like an old couch that needed to be thrown out, my mom wouldn't think to drive it to the dump or to call the city to schedule a pickup for a large item. Instead, she just grabbed her tool of choice, a knife, <laughs> and cut up the couch or Christmas tree or mattress and slowly throw away pieces until it was all gone. <laughs> the obvious question here would be, why not scissors? <laughs> We didn't regularly need scissors, but there was always plenty of knives around. Enough that we would usually have a little pile of knives in the yard waiting for use. The scissors we did have were for school, and those couldn't cut through weeds as easily. And if we had scissors laying around, my mom would just sell them. It may also seem like this was a punishment, but doing yard work with a knife was a normal chore, just like washing my dad's jeans in the bathtub or crushing an aluminum can to sell at the junkyard. Totally normal chores that I assumed everybody did. It was another task that I had to do when I would rather just be inside playing video games. My biggest complaint in all this was that I was bored. I tried to make the time go by in my imagination. Sitting out in the dirt, I'd imagine scenes like the ones you saw in action movies. Sometimes I would pretend that the knife was a character fighting through waves of plant enemies. As I got older, I settled into the idea that my mom and I would just never understand each other. I was into philosophy and science and arts, things that were not helpful for lawn maintenance. <laughs> one, time when we went, one time we were waiting in the car, I asked her if she ever thought about how crazy it is that we live on a planet in space. I stared at her as I watched her process the question, hoping that maybe I tapped into something. But after a, pre, a brief pause, she said, I never think about that. Yeah. Just seems so strange because that's all I ever think about. <laughs> Despite some difficulties, my family was always very close. We'd regularly assemble at my mom's house even after all of us had moved out. If any of us were ever visiting, no one knocked on the door or called ahead of time. Her home was open anytime we needed a place to go. After my now ex-wife and I had our twins, we moved in, and she helped with childcare for the first few years. Her kids, our, her kids started having kids, and our family gatherings got even bigger. My siblings and I always got together for the holidays, crammed into the kitchen for Christmas and Thanksgiving dinner, being so loud when we talked that my mom would complain that we were too noisy. We did Easter egg hunts in the backyard for all the kids in the family. If any of us had any birthdays, it was tradition that we went to my mom's house for pizza and ice cream. And even though my mom could never keep track of the actual birth dates or how old we were turning, she was there napping on the couch while we all yelled over each other. In 2014, my now ex-wife and I moved out on our own into a do-better house down the street where I grew up. When we moved in, my mother-in-law wanted, wanted to give us uh, her old full-size piano that she had kept in storage for several years. We reluctantly agreed to take it and some movers dropped it off outside our house a few days later. 
I went out in the morning and saw scratches on the concrete floor left by the movers, who had dumped this big old piano in the front yard. My mother-in-law intended for this to be a gift, but the wood was peeling off the exterior. It was out of tune and smelled dusty. It had rained a few days before, and since my wife and I were not able to get this piano inside the house, it was now bloated and stagnant. It looked like if a piano was a haunted pirate ship. <laughs> we called a local thrift store to see if they could come and take it, but they inspected it and decided that it was too damaged to resell it. I needed to figure out a way to get rid of it. <laughs> and this is when all the training that my mom taught me growing up finally came into play. I pushed it over onto the front lawn of my house and began to break it apart piece by piece. The rain had weakened it a bit, but this instrument was still very sturdy. <laughs> Toppling it over didn't cause the damage that I was hoping for. But I began to break apart the exterior, and once I got inside, I realized that there was all these parts that were connected. If I was gonna create smaller pieces, I was gonna have to remove the strings and the hammers from the metal frame. I don't know what tools are good for breaking apart a piano, so I used a hammer, some pliers, and my old friend, the knife. <laughs> it took some time, but I slowly took it apart and successfully disposed of the whole thing. I love the idea of taking something that seems way too big and breaking it down a little bit at a time. When I was young, I felt like a borona. I didn't have a place where I could go, where I could get confidence and assurance that I could accomplish my dreams. Now as an adult, my favorite thing is having a lot of hobbies because the ability to learn things feels like a superpower that my mom never knew that she had. She had to work since she was a child and didn't have time for imagination. But slowly with the help of the family, she started to grow and learn as well. We encouraged her and guided her in the best way that we could. Eventually she solved the problem of her yard by putting down artificial turf. <laughs> Although she still uses the occasional knife for cutting weeds. I remember when I separated from my wife uh, and I was leaving the home that we'd lived in for four years. I was crying and my mom drove by and called out to me and saw that I had tears in my eyes and asked what was happening. My mom has never been the best person with words. She's not soft. But in that moment, she assured me that she was here to help and that her home was open whenever I needed it. David Zafra, everyone. David.